Hi, and welcome to part 13 of my Python programming for beginners tutorial series. Today, we're going to be looking at uh, strings and the diff different methods that you can execute on a string. Um, because you're going to be dealing with strings quite a lot in Python, especially if you're going to be taking in user input. Um, especially with the different types of things that users might type into the system and you need to modify for uh, your loops to check properly, your conditional statements to check properly. Uh, so let's take a look and see what we can do with strings. So firstly, we're just going to create um, our string variable and I'm just going to put this to name and I'm going to create a string here. So I'm going to basically make it as if um, we had a user uh, type in uh, their name and we're going to make it as if they typed in um, a space before they typed their name and then uh, they typed in their name and then they just put a bunch of spaces at the end. Uh, so we have their first name, we have their last name, we have tons of spaces at the end, tons of spaces at, at um, the beginning. We have some space in the middle, and uh, let's actually just make that a bunch of spaces in uh, the, actually, let's just do it one space in the middle. We're actually gonna go back to if they did a lot of spaces between the two names um, in just a little bit. So the first thing that we can do with strings is we can get the length of the string. So basically how many characters are in that string. Um, and that we can just use len, and then the actual string. So if we go ahead and we do print len name, that will print out the length of the name a string. So if we execute this here, we see that it is 22 characters. Now, if someone in, uh, inserted this as their name, we would want to make sure that we trim off this white space at the beginning and at the end just to be sure that we only have the part that's necessary. Um, so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to do name equals name dot strip and then open and close parentheses. Now what this will do, this will strip off all the white space at the beginning and at the end of our string. And then what we're going to do to see if that worked is we are going to do um, another print of the length of name. So let's see this here. So we can see here um, the first time we print the length, it's 22 characters. Then we strip off the white spaces and then we are left with 17, uh, which should just be uh, jacked, which is six, the space in the middle, which is seven. And then we have uh, four, five, and then another five, so that's 10. So that is 17 characters. Uh, none of the white spaces at the beginning or at the end are counted. Now, let's say you wanted to check against a uh, condition. Now, your condition might be all uppercase, might be all lowercase. It could be uh, capitalized. It could be tons of different things. I would always recommend checking against either all lowercase or all uppercase purely because it makes it a lot easier um, to validate in Python. You could do the capitalization like a title, um, but I would probably say the lower or upper would just kind of solidify and guarantee it being a lot easier to match. And then you can always modify the string afterwards. You could strictly use um, the methods that I'm about to show you in the conditional statement. So one thing that we can do is we can do print name dot lower. Now this will make every character lower um, lowercase. So here we can see that although I had put the capital J and the capital P for jacked programmer, when I print name dot lower, we get jacked programmer in all lowercase. And then the opposite of this, as you could probably guess, is going to be uh, name dot upper. And what that's going to do is make every single character uppercase. So here we have jacked programmer with all the uppercase. Now there are a few other um, functions that similarly change the cases here. So we have 
um, swap case, which will, um, any lowercase will become uppercase, any uppercase will become lowercase. So if I run that, we get jacked programmer where the J and the P are lowercase and then the rest are uppercases. Uh, so there's definitely quite a bit of things that you could do with methods. I definitely think that lower and upper will probably be your most used um, string methods uh, for manipulation and for conditional checking. Now, something else that you can do, and this is where we're gonna get a little bit more examples, is we can actually do a split function. So if you do a name dot split, you can actually split on a specific delimiter. So let's split on the space here, and that will give us like a first and last name. So the first name in our case will be jacked, and then the last name will be a programmer. Uh, but really, it doesn't have to be last name, first name. It'll just be like the first word and the second word here. So if we execute this here, we can see that it actually gives us back a list. Um, so it basically splits the string um, into um, by the delimiter that you set. Uh, so you can set this to anything. You can set it to a, a character. If you want to split on all the A's, if you want to split on a comma, uh, more traditionally, if you're splitting uh, strings, you'll probably split it on a comma, semicolon, colon, uh, space, or a tab. Um, this one is just a space. And you can see here that we get our list. And you could, again, use like the other lists here. If we did zero, this will get us only the first um, word, and this will give us the second word. And if you went out of bounds, you're going to get an error. That is the split function. So that could be super useful. Now in our case here, let's add a bunch of spaces and let's see what happens. So here we can see that we get a little bit um, of a different story here in our list. We actually get a little bit of empty um, empty items in our list because we have so many spaces. Uh, but this we could easily deal with um, by looping through this list and saying, if the length of the item is zero, then we just don't want it anymore. Um, so that's pretty easy to do um, with the loops that we've seen in the past and using some conditional statements. It's definitely something that you would have the ability to do at this point. Now, another really cool feature of strings is the ability to split, um, to replace characters in a string. So here we have um, jacked programmer. Uh, let's combine it into one word here, uh, just for our example. And what we want to do is we want to create a password out of that. Um, but we want to uh, do a dot replace. And then here you're going to put in um, the first, so it takes two arguments. The first is going to be uh, the old uh, character or string, and then uh, the new character or string that you want to replace it with. So here, if we did the A, and then we're going to replace it with an at sign. So basically, if we have wanted to make this a password and we wanted to kind of just switch out all the A's for at symbols, which is kind of a typical uh, password idea if you need to use symbols. And there we have it. We have jacked programmer with the A's are now at symbols. It will replace all the instances of that letter. Um, and you can actually even chain this. So if we did another replace at the end here, and then we did O's, and we replace that with zero, we are going to see that we have jacked programmer and now the uh, o is now a zero. The a's are at symbols. So you could definitely do um, daisy chaining of replaces. So like I said, there's a lot of other string methods, but I find that uh, the length um, method, the strip method, the lower and upper methods, um, the split and the replace are probably going to be your most useful um, string methods in your programs. Um, that you're going to be making with Python unless you have 
a special case that you might need to use the other ones. So that's it for string methods. In our next video, we're going to be taking a look at functions. So we could reuse blocks of code instead of having to copy paste or rewrite those blocks of code over and over again. So make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I will see you on the next video.